Today we're looking at the core study by um, Savage Rambertal about spontaneous symbol acquisition and communicative use by pygmy chimpanzees. So the aim of this study was to conduct a case study on the first non-human to acquire symbols without specific training and also to compare the pygmy chimpanzee which is often called um, a bonobo uh, these days with the common chimpanzee. So the methodology they use, this is something that people often make mistakes in the exam on. Okay? This was a longitudinal case study okay? conducted over 17 months. Um, it was not an experiment. Um, people often classify it as an experiment because they believe that the independent variable was the comparison between uh, common chimpanzees and pygmy chimpanzees and the dependent variables being the, the results on the formal tests as well as their kind of language use. But it states quite clearly in the original study that it was not an experiment. Okay, It wasn't planned. Um, it was just observing the events and, and writing them up as they went along. It didn't have the same kind of formal aims that an experiment would have had. So the participants, there were four participants in the um, study. There were two pygmy chimpanzees. Um, Kanzi, who was probably the main participant in this, um, who was aged 30 to 47 months at the time of filming. And there was also Malika, his younger sister, who was 11 to 21 months. The reason that they use these pygmy chimpanzees um, is because they hadn't really been studied formally um, in language acquisition in a way that many other chimpanzees had been. Um, and there was some kind of indication that they might be able to perform better. They have more natural eye contact, gestures and vocalisations than other chimpanzees. They have a more social structure in, in the wild, more social relationships, um, and they had appeared to demonstrate greater cognitive abilities. Um, they were being compared to two common chimpanzees called Sherman and Austin, who were slightly older. They were nine and ten during the study. Okay, so before the study actually started, so prior to the study, Kanzi um, had been brought to the Language Research Centre with uh, Matata, his adoptive mother, um, and he spent all his time with Matata until he was two and a half years old. Um, at the age of two and a half, she was taken away to be part of a breeding programme. Um, so in this time, in this two, first two and a half years, um, Matata was being kind of informally taught symbols um, using a lexigram, okay, using a special keyboard. And Kanzi was there during those sessions. So although Kanzi was never actually taught, never directly taught himself, he did observe Matata be, being taught. Um, sometimes he appeared to take an interest, sometimes he took very little interest in it. Um, Malika was Kanzi's younger sister. She never actually sat in on any of these training sessions, so she'd never um, observed Matata uh, being taught the symbols. Um, Sherman and Austin, as I said, they were slightly older, nine and ten years old, and they were reared in a language-using environment. They were born into captivity, as was Kanzi and Malika. Um, but there were some differences in terms of the way in which they were reared. So Sherman and Austin were trained to use lexigrams. Whereas Kanzi and Malika were just immersed in a learning or language using environment, I should say, the, the members of staff that were there were just using the lexigrams around, uh, using the lexigrams as they kind of went about their day to day things, um, using some American Sign Language. Um, whereas Sherman and Austin were specifically trained using rewards to try and use the lexigrams. Um, whereas, I'll talk a bit about the lexigrams in a minute, whereas Kanzi and Malika's lexigram made synthesised speech every time they pressed on a particular key. Um, Sherman and Austin's didn't because they'd shown no evidence that they actually understood the spoken language, so there didn't seem any point in using it. And they didn't use a keyboard outside of the laboratory, whereas Kanzi and Malika did. Um, when Sherman and Austin did use a, a kind of keyboard outside of the laboratory, they tended to not be able to use it very accurately. The, the fact that there weren't discrete buttons to press um, seemed to cause them a problem. Um, that's just some pictures of the chimpanzees on the top left inside the uh, laboratory. And then that's Kanzi with Sue Savage Rumba using the outside lexigram. OK, so I've mentioned the lexigram. What actually is it? OK, so that was the main communication system that they used. And a lexigram is where you have a geometric symbol, um, and in this case it, it lights up when it's touched, and 
for Kanzi and Malika also kind of speaks and says whichever word it is that they've just touched on. Um, and importantly with the lexigram, the symbol um, doesn't actually bear any relation to what the word is. It's just a representation. Okay. They also use some American Sign Language, about 100 signs, although none of the staff there was actually fluent in American Sign Language. Um, um, so any and all of these were used by the researchers and by the chimpanzees. Um, these are some images of the lexagram there. Um, you can see in the bottom right the outside lexagram, which was just a laminated copy. Um, and just some close-ups, you can see some examples of some of the words. You've got orange, tickle, melon, sue. Okay, lots of different words there. So how did they actually collect the data? So inside the laboratory uh, setting, um, the lexagram was automatically recorded by computer. Um, outside, um, there were 55 acres outside, um, it was recorded by hand by the members of staff and then that evening it would, all the kind of lexagram use would be transferred onto the computer. And they kept quite detailed records. So they kept records of when lexagram usage was used, whether it was correct or incorrect within the context in which they were using it. And they also recorded um, whether it was spontaneous, which means that it's initiated by Kanzi or Malika. If it was imitated, so they're copying part of what the researcher they're working with is saying, or whether it was structured. So that means that they've been asked a question and their use of it is answering in some way the, um, um, sorry, giving an answer to what the researcher has asked them. Um, in addition to that, they also had what's called the vocabulary, vocabulary acquisition criteria, which were um, about whether it kind of could be classed as a word that they had within their vocabulary. So first of all, it had to be appropriate. Okay, so them using that particular symbol on the lexagram had to be appropriate. The second one was that the words had to occur naturally or spontaneously in nine out of ten occasions followed by a demonstration of concordance. And what that means is that they, um, for example, Kanzi might indicate he wanted to go to the treehouse, and then this would be verified, so there would be concordance, if he then took the researcher to this location. Okay, so that shows that he's used that word spontaneously, and then the fact that he's then kind of behaviourally taken him to the treehouse means he, he has been using that word correctly, and he's demonstrated that. Okay, um, a little bit more about the observing versus training. Like I said, Kanzi and Malika didn't receive any formal training. Okay, they were uh, immersed in a language using environment. Okay, so the people modeled the symbol use, they never forced either chimp to imitate. Okay, there were no rewards given for them using the symbols correctly. Okay, their behaviors and responses were just observed and recorded using the criteria I just talked about. Okay, so it's a kind of example of passive rather than active learning. They did have some controls going on during this. Okay, first of all, they had those vocabulary acquisition criteria, which were fairly strict um, in order to decide whether a word was part of their vocabulary or not. Um, secondly, they actually um, took part in some videotape analysis and scoring by an external observer. Okay, so there were about four and a half hours of videotape, which somebody had, um, where somebody there had been uh, recording Kanzi's use of the lexagram and been recording whether or not it was spontaneous, whether or not it met the criteria, and that person didn't know that it was going to be videoed and then checked by somebody else. And that other person then watched it, and without seeing the original person scoring, uh, checked. And, and kind of recorded whether they thought it was spontaneous, etc. And there was total agreement. Um, in fact, the person watching the video did notice some extra uses of the symbols which the person there at the time hadn't noticed, but there was total agreement on all the things that the observer had seen apart, which, which makes the results more reliable. They also had some formal tests of their ability to produce and receive communications, and I will go through those in a second. Um, there was also some blind tests of the foraging site. So the external, so the Language Research Centre had two parts. It had the internal laboratory 
and it also had the external area, which was about 55 acres of um, lots of wooded area and open areas. Um, and particularly in the summer months, Kanzi and Malika spent a lot of time outside. And what they used to do was hide bits of food in various different sites externally. And then they used various different photographs and different cards and symbols to kind of get Kanzi to go around to the different sites to find different foods. And to check that Kanzi had actually understood what the different photographs meant, different symbols meant, um, they got Kanzi to take someone who didn't know the woods at all um, and they got him to take him to different areas um, when he would show them different photographs to check that Kanzi really did understand where the different bits of food were, what the different pictures and the different symbols represented. And, and Kanzi was, was very competently able to do that. Um, so in terms of the kind of more informal, just everyday recording, um, Kanzi and Malika both made rapid progress in their word acquisition. Um, so when the test first started, Kanzi could use various words like orange, sorry, lexagrams like orange, peanut, banana, apple, bedroom, chase. Um, and then... Interestingly, similarly to children and the way they acquire language, the symbol comprehension preceded production. So they could understand what a symbol or what a spoken word meant before they were able to use it themselves. So when they did some formal tests on Malika, they were really surprised that she did as well as she did because a lot of the words, the lexagrams that it appeared she knew how to use um, or knew what they meant, she'd never actually used herself before. So they, they had a much higher number of symbols that they understood, even if they couldn't use them within their own kind of speech. Kanzi also was able to produce some word combinations, so putting more than one word together. And Kanzi could put three words together and in a more advanced way could actually refer to other people or asking other people to go and do things for him. Okay, so what were the formal tests? At the end of the 17-month period, so before this study was published, um, they tested on all items, sorry, both chimpanzees, both pygmy chimpanzees were tested on all items in their vocabulary. Okay, it was a blind test. So it was done in very controlled conditions. Okay, um, they actually were completed in an alternative location. The researchers, um, there were no rewards given, no specific order. They did try to make it as kind of difficult as possible so that they weren't getting any that the chimpanzees weren't getting any cues from the researchers so what were they um the first of the formal tests was spoken english to lexagram okay so the test consisted of the subject listening to the spoken english word and then selecting the appropriate lexagram from a set of three alternatives okay and the english word was usually presented in a sentence um, spoken English to photograph, so same idea, the subject listens to the spoken English words in a sentence and then selects the appropriate photograph from a set of three alternatives. Synthesised English to lexagram, so this test, same format as um, the other ones, but here the word is produced by a synthesizer rather than um, somebody actually speaking it. Um, the word was produced twice by the synthesizer and... The purpose of that test was to demonstrate that the subject was not responding to the intonation of natural human speech. Um, Kanzi was the only chimpanzee to actually do that test. And he was able to do most of them, but not quite all of them. Um, it seems like it was particularly difficult. And actually, even some of the um, researchers found it quite hard to understand what the synthesizer was saying. So that was quite a difficult test. Um, and the last one, photograph to lexagram. So in this one, um, the subject was shown a photograph and then was asked to select from a set of three alternatives the proper lexagram for the photographs. Okay, um, And the alternatives weren't visible to the experimenter so that they were not able to give them any clues. And in terms of the results of the formal tests, um, they didn't do the spoken English ones to um, the common chimpanzees because previous research has shown that they didn't understand the spoken English. But um, the pygmy chimpanzees did significantly better on the photograph to lexagram than the common chimpanzees did. And the pygmy chimpanzees did incredibly well on all four of the tests, implying that they had developed pretty good language acquisition in that sense. So there were various conclusions that they made. 
Okay, one, pygmy chimpanzees learned lexagrams quicker than common chimpanzees did. Uh, pygmy chimpanzees exhibit symbolic and auditory perceptual skills different from those of common chimpanzees. So the pygmy chimpanzees could actually understand the written, sorry, the spoken language, whereas common chimpanzees cannot. Um, that's what I just said there. And also, pygmy chimpanzees were able to understand single words without specific chaining. So they didn't need to be trained using rewards. If you just immerse them in that language environment, which is much like children would be, human children, um, then they pick up and are able to use those, well, the lexagrams in that, in that case. Um, Kanzi also was able to use much more advanced kind of ways of using language. He was able to make requests that didn't include himself, so A to chase B. Um, he made few errors of generalisation, whereas the common chimpanzees made quite a few errors with their generalisation. So Kanzi would refer to Coke and juice as two separate things, whereas Sherman and Austin, Coke and juice, well, that, that would just mean a drink. and They'd use it in the same way. Um, and Kanzi's receptive skills preceded his productive skills. And I talked about that previously, like human beings. Okay, so he understood words before he could utter them. So overall, pygmy chimpanzees appear to differ significantly from other chimpanzees in their ability to comprehend verbal speech. Um, and the pygmy chimpanzee appears to have a greater skill at acquiring symbols than other apes. So, I mean, like I said, this study, it was 17 months long, but this was part of a kind of ongoing project. So it did continue, and actually Kanzi continued to add to his vocabulary. Um, he had about 500 words in his vocabulary, I think, at the last count. Okay.